Good morning, Bridge Nation. We greet you with love, those listening here in Jamaica, those listening and watching from other parts of the world. It's Tuesday, the 8th of March, 2022. This is Up and Go, and you're on the Bridge 99 FM to the world. I'm not alone in the studio. My name is Richard B. Good morning, Bridge Nation. You know, it's your boy, Shells. Good morning, Bridge Nation. It's your girl, Queen Jojo. Morning, 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 Bridge Nation. Yours truly, DJ Ardley. Okay, everybody's got a voice this morning. That's a good thing. As <laughs> <laughs> it's International Women's, Women's Day, Day. celebrated right. annually on mm. March 8, and it's a day that commemorates the social, political, and economic achievements of women. Women in different parts of the world use this day to come together to celebrate one another and rally for equal treatment and representation. The theme for this year's International Women's Day is Gender Equality Today for a Sustainable Tomorrow. That's Beautiful. Right. This year's campaign is represented by the hashtag Break the Bias. Ha um, yeah, this is represented by the Break the, the Bias hashtag. Yeah, you know, say enough to say hashtag after hashtag. <laughs> anyway, yeah. and calls on people to work towards a world that is equitable, inclusive, and free from bias and discrimination. So the playing field is leveled for women moving forward. We have today the opportunity to put women and girls at the center of our planning and action and to integrate gender perspectives into global and national laws and policies. Seema Bahu's executive director of the UN Women said this lovely quote. Yeah, and we have a lovely lady in the studio. Oh, why thank you, why thank Powerful. you. Powerful, <laughs> we say happy <laughs> International thank Women's you. Day. Thank you. And uh, <laughs> where are the cameras? <laughs> surprise, oh! surprise. That is I yours, Jody. Yeah. <laughs> we got you a little surprise oh. for International Women's Day. Thank you. And uh, That's right. we'll you up. <laughs> it's pretty too. I look at Oh, she's got a glance already. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nice. so that is all yours. Thank you. And um, I hope it's going to be a great day for you and for all the ladies here on uh, Bridge 99 FM yeah, and right. to all the f females listening to us wherever you are listening to us from right now. Big respects yeah. to all the women on IWD, <laughs> International <laughs> Women's <laughs> Day. Yeah. Right now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for WTF, and that what is What the, the fact. fact. And as I indicated earlier, um, the electric refrigerator was designed by a woman mm. in the year 1913. I think it is important that we carry a story like this on a day like this, which is celebrated worldwide as International Women's Day. So uh, for most of human history, the only way to keep food cold was to surround it with ice. Mm -hmm. Well, Florence Parpart had a better idea. Her proposed design for an ice-free icebox used an electrical system to circulate cold water through the appliance, delivering more even and efficient cooling. Parpart and her husband applied for a patent in the year 1913. Wow. And now we continue to enjoy yeah. that particular innovation. Wow. Uh, I suspect that's her too, right? Yeah, that's her. Yeah, that's um, Miss Parpart on our screens. Mm. Yeah, fantastic innovation. Well, I did a fridge that looked bossy still for... <laughs> yeah, the fridge that looked kind of bossy yeah. still. I want to tell you, it looked like an upgrade on something that we, <laughs> yeah. we actually have in, in today's world. Yeah, nice. so that that is fantastic. Yeah, man. Yeah. Had to be a woman, eh? Yeah. I, I respect. I, I, gave, I gave somebody um, a little... Um, magnet for the refrigerator mm -hmm. on my way on, on um on my return from uh dubai right <laughs> and the person was like oh you know it's a refrigerator good, a good question <laughs> <laughs> i know you have a refrigerator because you also bought into the invention of uh <laughs> florence par part <laughs> okay that was uh what the fact yes, sir so, you know, we're starting our update this morning, Bridge Nation <laughs> and Patra, Queen Patra, right. um, Pac, uh, well, she is the queen, dancer, queen of the pa Patra, is giving hints that she's working on new music. Mm. Boy, I wonder how that song goes on, because I don't know if she can, for me, my favorite song is Romantic Mood. Yeah. So, I wonder how she can top that. <laughs> yeah, but, um, 
she did well on the um on the yeah she did pass the mic yeah, yeah pass the mic so good yeah, yeah, maybe that's energy maybe that's the inspiration behind yeah, this you yeah. know yeah so no Pete. doubt you'd have gotten some calls mm-hmm. after that um short performance either so she took some she took a long hiatus but yeah. she just shared on her instagram she'd been sharing photos you know throwbacks of when she just started in the industry and just giving little hints that she's going to be doing she doing her music and she's she her fans said to her that they are happy mm-hmm. to learn that she's going to return to music and she hinted that you know she'll mm-hmm. be here soon okay. so we are looking out for that yeah good yeah. luck to patra definitely definitely well sticky with some music news you know but this one interesting to hear is from our politicians um dancehall artists missing out on millions due to uninspiring repetitive lyrics says minister samuda Yes, Bridge Nation. Social Security Minister Carl Samuda has charged his colleague, Entertainment Minister Olivia Babsy Grange, to use her charm and skills to encourage new dancehall artists to step up their lyrical game as uninspiring and mediocre content is causing them to miss out on millions. Samuda, who turned 80 years old, wow, congrats, he turned 80 years old last month, made his call to Grange, who is a former manager for Bounty Killer, well, Shabba Ranks and Patra, during Thursday's sitting of the Standing Finance Committee of Parliament. Here it is. Babsy, you have been the best. There is one thing I want to add. In the area of entertainment, and I hear you speaking about Jam World, etc., Minister, you have to got you have got to use some of your magic to get some of our entertainers to recognize that unless the songs that they sing can be marketed by being able to understand the lyrics, then they will not enjoy the level of popularity and revenue that is earned from like the great Bob Marley and others. Samuda, who is a former industry investment and commerce minister, said. Also, he also went on to say nobody is going to buy something repetitively that only has the rhythm. That's the only part of it. The lyrics must go with it. And the lyrics, we are not short of lyrics. And in fact, go one step further. Encourage them to be philosophical with the lyrics. The ones that are most successful are the ones with the philosophical base and the message. Mm. Minister Samudas okay. said. Mm-hmm. Can I recall ever hearing him comment on um, entertainment? That's, right. That's what I said. So you yeah, know. So. So, so, hey. I, and I think that they're getting it now that music will help us make money. Mm-hmm. So know that they're commenting on it i hope they'll make way for the entertainment industry as well Mm -hmm. so that you know we can get back to what we do i just i just have one problem with it i mean i get what he's saying that you know you know uh minister granger you know has her charm and she has the experience but if the artist them head tough, what should I go do? <laughs> like, uh, what more I can she do? They're, they're ways to encourage artists. Right. Um, be, and they, they see this. We have with Shaggy, you know. We have so many artists that cross True over. Enough. And it's because they were able to change the yeah. lyrics, you, you know. See, you see, what happens is um, w- w- when they do certain songs, they, they develop this um, this street cred. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, they do make money because the sound systems and the dub Dubs. plate uh, mm-hmm. culture mm-hmm. Um, feeds that side of, of, of the industry in a big way. Oh, okay. right. and, but, but, but they need to understand that if you're making... Um, uh, fifty thousand dollars for for some dub plates. You can make fifty thousand U.S. dollars. Right. That's it. By going, you know, going out and, mm-hmm. and, and working. So, okay. so 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 we really need uh, endorse what he's saying. Yes. Yeah. And um and um the artists need to look within themselves. You know. Yeah. Even yeah. although they want to maintain that street credibility. Yeah. They have to look beyond our shores and make sure that they have music that travels. Uh, one quick one. Uh, Shaggy has been named but not charged over alleged COVID breaches in the in Bermuda. <laughs> Dancehall star Shaggy has been named in court documents lodged against two event organizers in connection with alleged breaches of COVID-19 protocols that took place on a controversial boat trip last summer in Bermuda. Shaggy has not been charged in relation to the incident, but Cindy Clark, the director of public prosecutions, said that prosecution will be going ahead with charges levied against the promoters. Mm -hmm. Their names are Matthew Strong and Solange Gistner. The charges, two counts, relate to alleged offenses on June 8 of the year 2021, and the case will be heard in the magistrate's court this Friday, the 11th of March. Mm-hmm. So um, it is something that caused quite uh, a firestorm over there in Bermuda, and the premier, David Burt, had to step forward to strongly deny claims that a controversial raft up involving U.S. high fashion firm Revolve and singer Shaggy was authorized by the government. A police investigation was launched into the event, culminating in charges being levied now against the 
promoters. So Shaggy mm. is not charged, although he's named mm. in, 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 in the suit. But the, the promoters are the ones who will face the, um, uh, what do they call it, the long arm of the law. <laughs> and we'll see how that one pans out, all right? Yeah. Those are the stories we thought we'd share with you right here, right now, inside of Update. Update. We'll do it again tomorrow morning at 7.30 right here on Up and Go on The Bridge 99 FM. It's now time for Proverb, proverb of, of the day. day. Take it away. <laughs> All right. So Rainford is going to play the Proverb of the Day for us. And I'll share the meaning with you guys. Take in front before in front take you. Excuse me? Take in front before in front take you. <laughs> Did you guys get that? Why is Richie so sad? <laughs> take in front oh. before in front take you this is a family show <laughs> yes it is mm. would you I like to <laughs> yes please I'm what do you think it means i'm gonna play the fifth i don't <laughs> i can't I, with you guys i don't know you know at this point so the <laughs> meaning is to quickly fess up when you do something wrong to avoid worse consequences so it's encouraging you to quickly fess up before so take in front before in front take you you know, okay. why is everybody so silent? Oh, no. What you? I don't. Hey, it's all good. Take in front. This requires deep thought. <laughs> <laughs> so get before the problem quickly. Don't let it oh. stay there. Oh, get before. Oh. Yes, get before the before problem. Before the problem. Before the problem. Right? Come before you. Confess yeah. before it oh, becomes. Before. 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 Oh, the fr- yes. oh. So take in front before in front. Take you. Th- that makes it a little bit more palatable. <laughs> God. <laughs> People, I know y'all who are listening right now understood yeah, sure. that proverb. Where's this one from? <laughs> it's from Trinidad. Oh, the Trinidad. <laughs> you, you Trinidad people, you see. <laughs> okay, that's the proverb that's of the, the day. That's the proverb of the day. So, Rainford, we're coming up to our pet peeve, and our pet peeve is coming from our WhatsApp line, okay. and it is Angie. Um, Angie sharing her pet peeve with us this morning and remember our pet peeves are those things uh the pet peeves really are things that others do that you might find annoying or irritating or evening even uh upsetting right. so we're going to be hearing from angie any second now as to what her pet peeve really is Listen. here's angie with this morning's pet, pet peeve. peeve hi this is angie and people do a lot of stuff to annoy me but you know the one thing they do to annoy me is I, I, I'm just waking up. And the mother asks me, you wake? Like, seriously? Oh, my God. That annoys me very much. You wake? Yes, I am awake. <laughs> it's like, uh, true, obvious question. <laughs> obvious answer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> question. Yeah, she, she hates redundant <laughs> questions. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> did you just call? Yes, I'm talking to you. I'm, a, I'm awake. <laughs> I think, I think, you know, I can't say I do that because the vibe what I'm getting is like, is if, you know, it worse if somebody wake you yeah, and then I ask do. if you're weak. That's my mom and my sister. You're weak. <laughs> you wake up. I'm like, you literally, I'm talking to you. <laughs> you wake me up. Hello. You... <laughs> <laughs> I'm awake. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, our first guest this morning is the creative producer and founder of the Jamaica Best School Band competition that's referred to as the JBSB. Her name is Raven Amani, and she's very excited to share with us this morning about the uh, J- JBSB after canceling the competition twice because of the novel coronavirus pandemic. And it is now set to begin in March with a few changes here and there, which we'll get all that detail from her right now. Good morning, Raven. How are Good you today? Morning. morning. Can you tell I'm so excited to be here? I will Thank give you. thanks. We, we're yes, excited to be too. here with you. <laughs> we are so happy to have you, Raven. And uh, let's get right into it. Um, first of all, I want to ask, what inspired the Jamaica Best School Band competition? Okay, so approximately 16 years ago, I was on my own journey trying to navigate the music industry. And um, so to say, I was meeting in a lot of roadblocks and we became very frustrated. So I um, figured, you know, let me try to see what else there is that I can do. And uh, David Smith, who was road manager for Etana at the time, 
said to me, why you don't come up with an idea to do probably a program, a TV program, some kind of program? I said, okay, let me, let me think about it. And I gave it some thoughts, brainstormed, and thought, you know, we could do a school band competition mm -hmm. and started calling up the schools to see if they had any bands. Most of them were saying, no, we don't have any bands. There are no... The type of band that we, we would have, were looking for is a stage band, you know, like the third worlds and the inner circles. Mm -hmm. Like and, show bands. Um, show band. Yeah. And they were saying, no, we don't have that type of band. It was like a one and two, one or a few schools that had, you know, like Herbert Morrison and Alpha, of course, Alpha, Alpha Boys at the time. And uh, so... That's how it came about. We started mm -hmm. the journey of putting the school band competition okay. together. And w which year was this, you said? The idea first came like 16 years ago. We got started in 2014. Uh-huh. Okay, yeah. um, you, you you can um, verify this information. We have a colleague who gets very excited when uh, during our show and send us messages, and so his name is Sajay, and he just sent us a note. I think Shell's got it as well, mm -hmm. saying um, Alpha Institute won the Jamaica Best School Band Competition the first year that we entered, and he considers that a fun fact. Can you tell us if that <laughs> <laughs> if that information is correct? <laughs> Yes, they entered in 2016 and they won. All right, all right. So congratulations, Sajay, <laughs> nice, and the team. You did it. <laughs> big up himself. Now, now, Raven. Um, please just you know, big up, big up Alpha Institute and Sajay again. But how does the competition work? Okay, so we send out the call for entry mm -hmm. um, through the through the various mediums, and of course, the Ministry of Education they assist us as well to send out the call for entry to all the schools right across the island. And, you know, there's a window, so we have a deadline. And they enter, and then we have four rounds of competition for our judges. Music icons, mm -hmm. some of the best in the business, talking about people like Mikey Bennett, Lloyd Parks, Ibu Cooper, Grub Cooper, Frankie Campbell from Fab Five, and a long list of luminaries. Mm -hmm. yeah. To judge the competition from a list of criteria, you know, things like stage management, presentation, mm -hmm. how the band is, is, is performing together, the, the evidence of rehearsal and preparation and, and all of that. Okay. Yeah. So, so how do schools go about entering a competition? Is there any different way to enter this, this time around? Now, this time around, you send us an email mm -hmm. at Jamaica's Best School Band at gmail.com or you give us a call at 348-3001 and, you know, go from there. Okay. We send you the information and you sign up and we get going. Mm -hmm. Of course, this year we get going at on the 24th. We made a few changes. Mm -hmm. So usually we start with a pre-competition school tour where we take a team of music industry professionals into the schools to do presentations. We're talking about people from JCAP, DIPO, Broadcasting Commission, mm -hmm. you know, because we do in, see where the education part of things is important in, you know, to encourage the young talent to know about their creative rights, mm -hmm. their intellectual property rights, and all of that. So we do that first, the pre-competition school tour. Now that everything is the way it is with the COVID pandemic. Mm -hmm. We have decided to forego that part of the competition this time around and to go straight into the rounds where um, now we are asked to submit videos of a performance of their choice. Okay. I think another change that I am um, told you'll be making is that you're, you're actually reducing the number of schools from, uh, was it 22 back in 2022, 10 this year, is that correct? Right, that's correct, because, of course, you know, forming a band is not easy. Mm -hmm. And um, the students being out, there's a rule in the competition that no past student can represent the school. So you find that the student, the, the musicians, they get better as they get closer to the school even here. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the teachers, they feel a bit, you know, like our better students are now graduated, so we have to start all over to groom, to 
tutor to you know to build the talent so that's why this time around we said okay no pressure we'll keep the number 10 so that those who were not so badly affected by the two years the two years out can participate uh, do you want the public's participation and also by extension how can the public uh view um the happenings in this competition Okay, so of course we'll be using of our social media platforms and we have our VP Records who is also on board and Edna Manley College who is a sponsor and we'll be doing the events from there. So we'll be streaming on these platforms and so you can always check us out at J Jamaica's Best School Band on YouTube, JBSB Nation, Instagram, Facebook. So we'll be streaming all the, the rounds and the final and everything on, on these platforms. Okay. Um, you mentioned Edna being one of the sponsors. Yeah, you guys have any other sponsors this year? This is my room. Okay, so the Vinyl Record Association, they will be awarding the winner $250,000. Mm -hmm. We also have, of course, Family Affair, there's an organization, there's a charity organization out of the U.S. who is now sending us some instruments to nice. include keyboards, guitars, flutes, and also equipment, monitors, amplifiers, and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. nice. And we are open to more, of course. <laughs> yeah. we, are open to, <laughs> we, are, we are open to more. It can't be too much because there are a lot of schools who would like to enter, but mm. they don't have the equipment. True. They don't have the the the, the, the instruments. Oh, so that's that's so yes. that's interesting, in you know, Richie, because not only it's not so you're, you're saying not not only it's a competition, but it's a competition that opens you know students to be able to access equipment you know through you guys. Is that what you're saying? Right. Oh, that's nice. Right. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It really promises to be a, a, an exciting competition, yeah. um, and uh, we're looking forward to following it. And enjoying uh, all that uh, will, you know, will, will, will be given to us uh, by way of these performances. So uh, good luck to mm -hmm. those that will be um, those 10 finalists. Yeah. And good luck with the competition, uh, Raven. This is really yes. something that we need mm -hmm. here in this country. And we commend you on putting it together. Right. Thank you so much. And let me say before I go that previous seasons, we've been on the Irie Jam app. Okay. So I'll... Um, we don't mind being on there this time around again, so hopefully we can talk and work some things out. All right. Yes. <laughs> we heard you. <laughs> right? Thank you so much. Have a great day. Blessings. All right. One love. Talking, uh, great talking with Raven Amani. And uh, she's the creative producer and founder of the Jamaica Best School Band Competition. Promises yeah. to be really exciting on its return this year. Good morning. <laughs> morning, morning, morning. How are you guys doing? We're great. great. It's International Women's Day of here course. in the world. Is it in the world, right? It's in yeah. The world. yeah. And Sorry. we all we it's... all want to take time while we say good morning to wish you in particular. Yes, Red. And then to all oh. the females listening, happy International Women's Day. Yeah. Yay! It feels like my birthday, honestly. <laughs> it does. I feel really good. The guys got me a cake and, what? you know, it's really nice. Chocolates, bonbons, all that good oh, stuff. Yes. Chocolate dip strawberries, so it feels good. You're not the only lady being treated. It's just that our producer is not close to where we are mm. right now. Oh, she's getting it? She's but getting she's it been, too? She has been smiling ear to ear since we started the program this morning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's With a good infectious smile she has. So <laughs> yes. <you> know. <laughs> so what's up, guys? All is well? Yes, all is well. We're we're celebrating today, and we have a lot of uh, guest speakers and guests, I should say, uh, interviews. Um, just you know, really showing showcasing a lot of great women and giving tips on, you know, how to how to self love, how to take care of yourself. Because if we yes. don't take care of ourselves, we can't take care of you guys, right? Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. That that right, chef. Right, right, chef. Yeah, 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 Agree. Like <laughs> what? All here is yeah, money. Yeah, money. Yeah, money. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things that we did is that for the first hour between 7 and 8 this morning, we played all females, and uh, the listeners really, really loved that. As a matter of fact, we might have to do some more of that later on this morning. Mm -hmm. So Thank it's a big enough. celebration going on, and we salute all the wonderful women out there on International Women's Day. 
Right. We've been doing the same, and DJ Ritz threw down a crazy mix. So, yeah. you know, you could check that out at DJ Ritz as well and at Flow 98.7. Um, yeah, it's just a great day. It's going to be a very busy month for us. We have rappers, more female freestyle rappers. Mm-hmm. Um, we have, uh, like I said, interviews. And yeah, really, concerts. earlier right, earlier we out. had uh, uh, guest, a guest that was talking about... Um, uh, Kim Niles, she was talking about fitness. So that was really good to hear mm-hmm. about how you can, like, you know, feed your body. And I know, mm-hmm. Richie, you're all about health. You're on your health kick, too. So, yeah, you know, little things like drinking more water, yeah. you know? Yeah. Simple things. Sense. In fact, this morning we talked about honey. Uh, was it? No, sage, sage is what we focused on in our mm-hmm. uh, feature for the love of health. You know, you talked Ooh. about shows and, uh, and so on. I, I wonder... Um, it just crossed my mind this morning. Are, are you guys looking at getting a number of shows going on in, in, in Toronto anytime soon? Mm. Like concerts? Like concerts yeah. and so on. Yes, yes. They're coming like crazy. T- t- tell it's me like... about that. What's going on so, on your end? So, right. So right now we have weekend tickets. I can't even say it twice because everyone's going to start calling for that. <laughs> <laughs> when you hear it but sometimes. we have the weekend. Um, coffee's coming the wow. weekend. Mm-hmm. And that's just in one week. We've been giving away tickets. Also, Perion, Perion's yeah. hip we to it. Chris Martin as well. Yes, we're oh, going to yeah, be giving away Martin, tickets yes. to Christopher Martin. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ten tickets coming. All of these people are coming. That's just today. That's just today. They're just coming into town. So everybody has something to do on the weekends. If you're not going, of course, to our club, Sugar Daddies, there are a whole bunch of concerts to check out. Uh, Conscience is coming soon. Shensia is coming. It's just going to be a lot of people in town. So get your dub plates ready. Somebody said that uh, Pampute, I think, is going to be heading your way, too. Yes, she's coming here on Saturday. Yes, Pampute will be here with Tentic. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, it's going to be a good one. And our carnival, uh, they've announced that carnival's open. So we have a mm-hmm. lot of different events mm-hmm. um, from carnival to pride. Uh, basically, all the events seem to be opening up. And thank God for that because wow. it, it's been, the struggle was two real. Years, right? <laughs> two years, can yeah, you imagine? A rough two years. I don't even think I know how to whine anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I lied. Out. I don't think I know how to whine anymore. That, that, is, like, that, is, that is not true. Uh, oh. true, uh, and, and, true. Oh. and that can be borne out if you just go to her IG page. Oh. Trust Stop me. It. Okay. Trust me. Shell, shell. <laughs> Anyhow, <laughs> oddly plays bubble, yeah, bubble, bubble, yeah, bubble. Yeah, bubble. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oddly, oddly. <laughs> you know, uh, remind. Did I tell you guys about the um, the jingle that Pampute did for the Bridge ninety nine FM? No. no. Oh, she did an interesting jingle for, yep. for us here. She wow, says, that's awesome. Some station a guani guani. But them, they might be big, but them not hot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> wow. like them sweet coming pepper. like sweet pepper. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Sweet pepper's worse than hot. Oh, wow. Them big, but them not hot. <laughs> wow. wow. <laughs> like sweet pepper. I might have to check her out on the weekend then. <laughs> yeah, if she's you, want, you want to see her. Trust me. Yeah, man. Uh, but okay. by the way, be warned. She might, if you're close enough, want to pull you on stage and, uh, and make you okay. become a part of her mm-hmm. act. Wow. Believe well, then maybe I'll stay in the back. <laughs> <laughs> Jay loves that. <laughs> We have a special guest here with us right now. Very special guest. And she has Jamaican roots. This was not by design, but of course it is by God's design. So um, we'd like to introduce McKinney Smith to the show. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Hi, McKinney. Hi, McKinney. Hi. Blessings. Can you guys see her? Can you guys see her? We're hearing you loud and clear. I was here. No, but can you see her? Oh, yeah. You guys are just loving the products coming out of Jamaica, aren't you? Look at the hair. (laughs) I see her. Look at the hair. <laughs> Both my parents born and raised in Jamaica. Okay. Really? Nice. Yeah. Beautiful. Which part? Right, uh, Richie? My father actually still lives there in uh, St. Anne's Runaway Bay. Mm. Okay. All right. Nice. Uh, McKinney Smith is a coach, author, podcaster. Uh, she uh, is about self-leadership, uh, inspiring women, storytelling. Um, you know, we've seen her on Instagram. I've seen you on Instagram, and I've heard some great things. And I, I remember, I don't, like, first of all, how long have you been doing this? Oh, wow. So my first book came out in 2014. Right. Um, but I started growing on Instagram probably around 2009, 2010. Wow. And Instagram, do you find it's really helped you? Uh, absolutely. I think 95% of my clients come from Instagram. Wow. Okay. And for for everybody listening in Canada and Jamaica, your Instagram, please share it with us so they can check you out right now as so we talk. So my personal page is The Real McKinney Smith. Okay. And it's The Real McKinney Smith because there is another McKinney Smith that isn't using the account, but she's also in Jamaica and Spanish Town. Oh, really? <laughs> no. So she might get some likes right now, too. <laughs> <laughs> some follows. Uh, what do you specialize in when you're coaching? 
So I do mindset coaching. It's really helping to amplify the voice of women and to help them walk in their greatness. Um, my personal mentor actually recently passed away, Bob Proctor. He was featured in oh, the documentary yes. The Secret. Okay. Um, so it's really helping people to reach their goals. Right. And your book, A Walk in My Stilettos, what's that about? So the first book, A Walk in My Stilettos, stemmed from just sharing my story, my journey. Um, you know, it was after my divorce and my sister passed away. And people were interested in how I was able to still stay positive, still push through, still inspire others. And I put it into a book to share tips and tools that they could use for themselves. And it kind of spiraled into a podcast now sharing the stories of other women, um, sharing their stories of resilience. Wow. Yeah. That's so important. And there's so many people, they say that your story really is on hold for somebody else. Absolutely. Did you find that, uh, you know, once you put your story out there, so many people could relate? You know what? When I first wrote the book, I was nervous about putting all my business out there. Right. <laughs> but then I realized that so many people could relate to my story where they felt like they were alone in their journey and they read the book and they're like, oh, my God, I, it felt like you wrote my life story. I felt like you were in my house looking through my window and telling my story. So having people reach out from like Australia, the States, all over the world um, saying that they could relate, that made me feel like, OK, this is important. Our stories matter. And then I realized, like, our stories may be about us, but they're not only for us. You know, your journey is an inspiration to help someone else, um, you know, who may be feeling like they don't have a voice or they don't know what to do next. Or they may see someone who's successful or someone who's on the radio and not know your journey. But then they hear your story and hear the adversities that you had to get through and Girl. realize, OK, they can be resilient and persistent and, you know, get right. to where they need to go. Right. Richie, questions on your side? Yeah, we, we just wanted to find out whether or not um, you always had a dream of becoming a published author. I didn't, actually. <laughs> um, interesting enough, after going through my divorce and my sister passing away and I was sharing my story um, at women's groups and, and stuff like that, people were like, wow, you need to write a book. Like some right. of the stories that happened to me, they're like, that, that can't be real. <laughs> now so. I want to know. Now I want to know because, girl. <laughs> yeah, and you know, I find breakups, especially, I don't know how men do it, uh, think about it, but I find for women, we really use that time to, or we should use that time to, you know, correct ourselves mm -hmm. in a sense, to take responsibility because, you know, we, we blame it on the guy, but it's like, why did I attract? Why did yes. I lower myself to be with somebody like that? Yep. And why did I allow that in my life? Yes. You know, why did I allow someone to treat me like that? Did, does your book talk about that a lot? So in my book, I do talk about my journey with the divorce. I talk about dating after the divorce. Mm -hmm. And then after, well, Quite often on the podcast, we speak about how women have gotten through breakups, things that we've learned, you know, how we can only really attract, uh, you know, what we're in harmony with. But also at the same time, myself included, have had experiences with, I'm going to say, narcissistic men. Or, what? Girl, um, let me get a high five there. <laughs> narcissistic abuse is Narci something that people abuse. don't talk about. Absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. So there's, you know, the narc abuse. And I recently um, opened up online talking about experiencing a relationship with the Toronto version of the Tinder swindler. Um, oh, my God. It may be my ex. Wow. Oh, girl, wow. girl. I'm wait a, a minute. I'm about to release details on my podcast on Thursday. Don't <laughs> freak me out. <laughs> no, but you know what? And nobody talks about this. Richie, it's so true. Emotional abuse. And there's even men mm -hmm. that deal with narcissistic yes. women. Absolutely. So this isn't just a one-sided yes. thing. But yes. it is Women's Day. So we, we go and talk. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, honestly, it's the emotional abuse is something that it's harder it's you know i hate to say it but physical abuse you can more see it it's hard to leave yes but you 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 know you're seeing yourself getting hurt and you're like you start to develop a hate for that person mm -hmm. but emotional abuse you're confused first mm -hmm. of all especially Absolutely. with narcissistic abuse you don't even know what's really happening you because don't know what's a lie perception of yes. reality yeah. wow look, yeah. look at jay <laughs> <Jay's> <laughs> yeah like, <laughs> Yeah, right, <laughs> right in the middle. <laughs> it was like a tennis match. I was like, what? Right, right, right. Like, My conscience is like, Jay, don't say that, you know? Don't say that. <laughs> what are you playing, Boti? You're supporting both sides, I guess. <laughs> you guys are 
Sometimes they're funny. Look at Jay. Look at Jay. <laughs> <laughs> What can Jay say? Jay's actually a good man. You yeah. know, he's very, I was saying that earlier. I'm blessed to be, you know, with yeah. three men that actually respect women. You know, Same I could wear a thong in here and they wouldn't even notice. You know what, what? I mean? Good men do what, exist. What <laughs> do I exert? <laughs> uh, I don't want the whole of Jamaica to feel that I'm a man that wouldn't recognize a thong. <laughs> Jay, do you corroborate? <laughs> Is this the bridge? Is this the bridge? Is all of my Jamaican family asking me? I lied at you. Know, I respect oh, her. Oh is what she's trying to say. She's the best. Yeah, uh, no, we're blessed. Nope. But McKinney, um, we just got to wrap this up real quick. So, for those listening, <laughs> words of advice and and words of like uh, encouragement, please. And also your Instagram again. Share it with us. Um, absolutely. So, words of advice, like look at your environment. Your environment is a reflection of what's going on inside of your mind. So, if you want to change your environment, you got to work on changing your mindset. Um, and in terms of uh, Instagram, my Instagram is at the real McKinney Smith. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Welcome to our show and welcome to Jamaica. You've been to Jamaica oh, a million times. Yeah. <laughs> What's your favorite thing to do in Jamaica? Um, the beach. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I just want to lay on the beach and absorb the sun and feel the salt water on my skin. Mm. Good luck with your books and your various projects. Um, Thank you. And all the best for the future. Great meeting Thank you. Thank you. You too. Yeah, guys. Wow. Um, oddly, she will not try that while you're in the studio. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. It's been a great week, guys. It's been a great show. And uh, Red is very clothed, as you, clothed, as you can see. <laughs> what are you talking because about? Because guys, they're talking sublimatively. Clothed. Yeah. Yes, clothed. Clothed, clothed, clothed and clothed. And clothed. clothed. Yeah, exactly. Yes. <laughs> Bingo. <laughs> On that note, have a great one. We'll talk to you on Friday. Take care. Have a great day. Bye-bye. And it's now time for us to get inside of our usual exciting feature. Wow. (laughs) Uh, The secret sound game. I think our phone lines are all loaded up. I like that. As everybody's trying after this gift that if you don't win, Shells believes he'll be able to take it home. Yes, sir. Talk truth. (laughs) We don't know about that. (laughs) But until that time comes, give us a call. 876-676-4996. And if you give us the correct answer to our secret sound game, you can walk away as a winner of this fantastic gift that we have for you. I think, Shells, it's a good time for us to allow them to hear the secret sound once again. So, here it is. One clue we gave so far. Yeah, that it is not an animal. Okay, that -hmm. should help. Maybe. Let's go to the (laughs) phone lines right now. 876-676-4996. first caller, good morning. Hi, good morning. Good morning, Good morning and welcome. How are you? I'm good. How are you? We're doing well here. What's your name? My name is Ashley. Ashley. Hi, Ashley. Where are you calling from, Ashley? I'm calling from Portmore. All right. All right. I just say, I just say basket. Okay. Ashley. Sh- Sh- Shells is rooting for you, Ashley. Of Don't course. disappoint. <laughs> What's your answer? Okay. Um, I'm, I was wondering if it's celery breaking. A what? Celery. Somebody breaking celery. Oh. Is that's not vegetable? bad. It's not breaking celery? No, we're told no, that is not correct. (laughs) Sorry, Ashley. Take care. Try again, though. Bye. Mm, Later. Well, who I got next? We got one more on the call. We got one more on the line. People coming in. This is the Secret Sound Game. Good morning. Hello. Hello. Who is speaking? I'm good, good. Who is this? This is Alvin. Alvin. Good morning, sir. All right. You want to hear the sound again or you have your answer ready? I have the answer. I like that. What's the answer? <laughs> so like a, a farmer preparing some wood to light a fire. I like I like the, the sentence. Bro gave us a whole sentence. And Alvin, I want to make you know what I'm <laughs> Sorry, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, my general. Good try, though. Okay, okay. Uh, thank that's you. That's <laughs> Sorry, Alvin. <laughs> try again, bro. <laughs> He took it with a smile and yes. like that. Let's go to another caller. There are several of them coming through. Yeah, Everybody like wants to win this game, and we're beating them bad, <laughs> unfortunately. Let's go. Good morning. You're on the air. Hello. Good, Hello. Good morning. How are you doing? You're welcome. Welcome. Hello. How are you? Hello. Good morning. You're hearing me? Yes, I'm hearing you. Okay, wonderful. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Milton. Calling from Kingston. Or Milton, yes, you Milton. said? 
Yeah, man. All right, Middleton, it's, thank you for joining us. I can't tell us. what it is. It's, it's a firearm being discharged. A firearm <laughs> being discharged. <laughs> like a shotgun or something. Hey. Oh, my goodness. That elicited hey. a lot of laughter, actually, hey. because uh, you sounded confident, but apparently you're far off <laughs> in your answer. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> No, it's not. It's not. <laughs> he can't even believe. Hey. It is not. Sorry about that. Think about it and try again. Let me let, let me allow the listeners to yeah, hear the sound word. again. Right? <laughs> Fire on the one clean. <laughs> <laughs> we got one more on the line. <laughs> Hi, good morning. Welcome to the Secret Sound Game. Hello? Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, who are we speaking with and where are you calling from? Angela in Portland, Texas. Hey, Angela. All right. Yes, we did. Good right. morning, Angela. How are Good you doing morning. today? How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Nice. Oh, fantastic. Um, Jody, you remember Angela who met in a serious accident and we took the time to um, send shout outs to her. Oh. This is Angela. Thank okay. God. Give you made it through, Angela, and we're so thankful. Yes, Richard, I am too. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Uh, some other members of your family were also injured in the major accident that you encountered. How are yes, they doing? My daughter and my grandson and our fiance. Yeah, and everybody's doing well? Everybody's doing okay. okay God is nice. good, Angela. Not God is good. Yes, he is. Yes, yeah. indeed. Thank you for calling and trying in the game, Secret Sound Game. What is your answer this time around? Well, I'm thinking that um, somebody's splitting logs, that the wood and it's falling. Is it splitting logs? Hmm. More yeah. tell you something, you know. That about you know, but. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh oh. Good try, though. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Angela, but let me tell you something. I'm really so happy to hear from you. you. And I wish you and the family all the best, all right? Thank you. Thank you. All right, take Have a great day, Angie. Long time listener, had a serious accident. Okay. Um, really, really major accident. Lots of injuries and so on. And God help her to um, recover. Mm -hmm. And for that, we're grateful. Definitely. That's all the time we have this morning inside of the uh, Secret Sound game. No winner. Woo! Yes! It's a good day. What does that mean? <laughs> we hold One on to the closer. prize a little bit longer. <laughs> we're standing by to join, uh, to be joined by Ramona Riley. And uh, she has an interesting story. Of course, March, I should tell you, is being celebrated as Endometriosis Awareness Month. And uh, if you don't know what endometriosis is, it's uh, an inflammatory condition where endometrial tissue um, grows outside of the uterus. And it is estimated, we're told, that about 1 in 10 women have, in fact, uh, in fact have endometriosis. And uh, this is a serious uh, illness that can cause infertility. And for women with subfertility, that is a woman who has been trying um, with unprotected protected sex for mm -hmm. for over a year um the prevalence rate we understand ranges from 25 to 40 percent mm -hmm. and uh this lady that we're speaking with this morning her name is ramona riley uh many people refer to her as the <laughs> say it man i think it's safe to say it i think it's safe to say it she, she's the vagina lady oh, oh Richie, okay you, you did it all right yeah the okay. vagina lady is with us today okay <laughs> <laughs> She's, she's Richie. Gather yourself. Is so, Ramona here? Morning, Ramona. I am. I am. Good <laughs> Hello, morning. Good morning to you both. Good morning, Ramona. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, you know, I, I, start, I, I, I had a little, um, a little issue. There's a composure there. Yes, yeah. I see and, that. And Shells just uh, took it over and just ran with it. <laughs> so, um, teamwork makes the dream, dream work. work. <laughs> it exactly. does. It does. <laughs> <laughs> Ramona, it's so nice to have you. I know this is a subject that is very dear to your heart, and you have a lot of information that uh, you generally share when we get a chance to speak. First of all, how does endometriosis affect women? Uh, well, you know, when it comes to endometriosis, uh, from a basic standpoint, it affects the woman's life in general. Uh, endometriosis has stages. So, for example, if you have a stage one endometriosis, of course, it doesn't affect your life as badly if you had stage two, three or four. Uh, but it definitely affects the way the woman lives her daily life. Mm -hmm. So you will realize that her periods um, become much more painful. 
Uh, they're long, they're heavy. Uh, she also finds that she has pain in other aspects or parts of her body differently from maybe her uterus. So she will suffer a lot from leg pain and um, knee pain and all of these different things. Uh, you mentioned fertility, and yes, that is a huge thing as well. Uh, you find a lot of times that women, you know, when it comes to our reproductive system, uh, you think that, well, that that at least that system should be um, healthy if you're a woman, you know what I mean? And when a woman suffers from endometriosis or any other reproductive condition, it really affects not just the physical, but the mental and emotional aspect of the woman. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it's very important when healing uh, a woman or trying to Re remove a lot of the symptoms that she might have uh, physically, it is also really important to tap into that emotional and mental aspect of her. What would you say are some of the, the possible signs that a woman may want to be looking out for and that could be telling her that she possibly might uh, be suffering from endometriosis? Well, one of the main things are, I would say are the cramps which would be the abdominal pain that you would suffer from before the period, during the period, and even after the period. So unfortunately, women that have endometriosis, even when the period is over, they are still in pain. Uh, I know a lot of women that heat, for example, sometimes when women have painful periods, we're told, you know, put a heating pad on your stomach and the heat will kind of help to calm it down. When women are suffering from endometriosis and they're in stage two and three and four, heat does nothing for them. They want cold. They want numbing. So they will place their abdomen on their cold tile, trying to get some relief, but it's not happening. Um, so abdomen pain is definitely one one of the major things for us to know, okay, something is wrong. And so when it is that you are having this type of pain, I always recommend a woman to do an ultrasound, um, go to your OBGYN, get a transvaginal pelvic ultrasound, which would be the ultrasound that um, would go um, up the vaginal cavity, um, not necessarily just over the abdomen, because you see more from that angle. Uh, now, endometriosis cannot be diagnosed from a um, an ultrasound, but sometimes you can see a little something, especially if it is um, at a bad case, right? If it's a bad case. Mm -hmm. uh, usually it is a laparoscopy, which an OBGYN also would do, um, which is a little minor surgery to go in to see what's going on. Is there extra scar tissue? Is there endometriosis there? And that is when they'd be able to tell you, okay, well, it's stage one, it's stage two. Um, and then they would remove the um, the, the scar tissue um, that has come from the uterine lining and now spreading to other parts in the reproductive system and or any other system. Now, now Ramona, I, I, I'm going to tell you something. Right? You know, I'm confiding in you. I'm confiding in you. And <laughs> listen, I'm a man. I, I know. I know a lot of women. A few women who you know struggle, who are struggling with this. And um, and I'm going to tell you like I feel helpless when they come to me. You know, mm -hmm. expressing how they're feeling. So my question to you is, you know, what are some of the holistic ways, you know, you'd recommend, you know, to women and even men like me who want to help, you know, as it relates to treating endometriosis or the symptoms? Okay, so, and I love that. I love mm -hmm. that because, you know, men really, especially if it's a friend or if it's your partner exactly. and you see them struggling, um, you do really do feel helpless. Mm -hmm. uh, the first thing that we really want to look on is diet, okay? The things that we're putting in our bodies can amplify the endo. Uh, and so we want to make sure that what is going in the body is not creating more inflammation, is not, cre is not um, allowing the estrogen level to skyrocket because the estrogen level definitely is an issue, right? Uh, so, for example, meats like chicken, and beef um, and pork, uh, 
things like gluten are huge because gluten creates inflammation, wow. right? Um, gluten doesn't allow your body to um, absorb the oxygen that your body needs as easily because gluten is a paste. Mm-hmm. And so a woman that suffers from endometriosis needs to try to have a gluten-free diet. Um, Dairy is also not her friend, Mm -hmm. so that is also an enemy food as well Mm -hmm. for a woman that would suffer from endometriosis. Uh, Soy also is something that would make her endo worse. So our foods definitely, definitely, definitely can change how it is that she can function on a daily basis. Uh, Apart from that, uh, we always want to make sure that we detox the body, okay? Uh, Everything starts in the gut, uh, including endometriosis, which is why what we eat affects, right? Uh, So we want to make sure that we're detoxing the body in a healthy manner, uh, and that will definitely help the situation. Um, For me... I really, every every woman is different and every woman's symptoms are different when it comes to endo, okay? They can be different. And so it's hard for me to say, do this or mm-hmm. do that. But I can definitely overall say, well, don't do this, <laughs> right? Okay. Um, which is like the food aspect, mm-hmm. right? Um, it's hard to say, go and exercise exercise can help but if you are in pain and you're uncomfortable yeah. then exercise is a little difficult or a lot difficult to do right uh but i use a lot of herbs and a lot of vitamins and minerals uh to to lessen uh the endo so i will have clients that come to me who have endometriosis and they are trying to now get pregnant and remove the endometriosis and um I find that I have to create treatment plans for them so that it can be less, Mm -hmm. right? And each woman, as I said, is different. Vitamins, important. Vitamin D3 is important. Uh, There's this thing called castor oil treatments, which are really, really great. Um, And that's something you can do at home. Uh, so there are a lot of things that we can do, I, I, but again, I, every woman is different. Yeah, I'd want to be asking you, though, um, before the condition actually um, comes on, um, what about preventative measures? What can you share with us in terms of how persons could prevent this from coming on or from happening? Okay, so you will find sometimes uh, so some women start having these endometriosis signs and symptoms from their, like, 16 Right. And we don't know because we just think, oh, it's painful periods because it's normal for a woman to have painful periods. Mm -hmm. Right. So that makes it a little bit harder. So what I would say is if you are a young girl or you have a daughter and she's suffering from painful periods, we want to then do something about it from now. Right. Um, If it is that you are probably... Um, your your periods are long, um, that is also a sign. So it's looking at these different signs because a healthy, happy period is really what you want. Your period tells you a story, you know, it, how, how your uterus is, what your uterus is like, right? And so we want to make sure that the periods are healthy. So when your periods are long, you, most women who suffer from endometriosis, their periods are not four days and five days. They're usually seven days and 11 days and those types of things, right? So in terms of preventing, it's always great to be able to just make sure that you are having healthy periods, happy periods. That's where it all starts then. That's where it all starts is your period. Mm -hmm. Um, The month, no doubt, will have a number of activities. Any that you care to highlight before you go? (laughs) Well, we will be having a endometriosis um, Zoom um, masterclass, um, mm-hmm. my company, Cosmic Woman. Yes. Um, and this masterclass is actually a free masterclass. Um, you can go on our IG page and you can get all the information for that. We're also doing a sweepstakes, um, choosing two lucky women who have been suffering from endometriosis. Uh, you send your email in telling me about your story and I choose two women to give a free consultation and products um, to help eliminate 
some of the symptoms that she might be having. Uh, those are the two main things that we have going on um, for this month. Okay, I, I have to ask before you go. I mean, it sounds like it, it's a condition that can, that can be treated, but can it be cured? <laughs> Good question. So, um, a OBGYN will tell you that it cannot be cured, um, and I don't want to say that it can be cured. What I can say is, uh, my goal is, and what I have been doing, is to help women eliminate the majority of their symptoms, so they're living their life like a normal woman every single day. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. You have provided a lot of information, oh, yes. which I'm sure that uh, was very, very useful yeah, uh, to the female uh, listeners out there. We thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today, and um, all the best to you going forward. Thank you so much for having me. Much appreciated, gentlemen. Thank you. Okay, Ramona. Ramona Have a Riley. Of the day. You, you too, too now. Uh, she's the CEO and owner of Cosmic Woman, and uh, she was our guest for the past uh, few minutes looking at the whole matter of endometriosis and its impact on our society. And we want to reach out to the ladies who might be suffering from that condition, and we hope that uh, you're putting up a good fight and uh, that you're making some progress. So Ramona is the one that uh, is referred to. As was mentioned earlier. <laughs> and earlier, what's her, what's, 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 what's she what's, referring what's she to? What's I, I lost my to? script. <laughs> <laughs> can Ramona somebody, is can somebody the, help me, please? The please? vagina lady. Oh, oh that's, that's what I was trying to. What is wrong is what is okay. wrong with okay. the? Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but she's Hardly. really good at what she does. <laughs> She's yeah. very good. Yeah, she's lot very of good at what she does. Yeah. I think it's yeah. the second time I'm actually getting Speaking a chance to, to speak. Right. With her. Mm-hmm. She always is armed with a lot of information, and usually the ladies respond uh, thankfully thereafter. You know. Yes. So we thank yes. her. Good morning, Sister Judy. Judy Mowat, how are you doing? Good morning, morning. Richie. How are you? I am so happy to have you. Good to hear you. It's been a while. How have you been? (laughs) It's a beautiful day. Yes, it is indeed. Perspective of all that's happening. Mm -hmm. It's lovely. And so we give thanks. Myself and Shells are talking with you this morning, Sister Judy. It's a a privilege. Uh, How have you been during all this time with all the uh, pandemic and so on? How have things been with you? Well, I am thanking God this morning that I am not in a hospital Mm -hmm. with a ventilator hooked up to me. Yes. And I am breathing. The breath of life, the breath of God is in my body. Mm -hmm. And so I am thankful. It is important that we got a chance to speak with you on a day like this, International Women's Day. And, um, you know, that in itself is bringing us joy. Yes, man. Um, we just gave an indication to our listeners as to your journey, starting out as a dancer, then becoming a member of several groups, eventually the I-3s. And in all of that, you also had a solo career. But, uh, Sister Judy, did, did you ever imagine that you would have made, uh, through the years, such an impact on our industry? I had no idea. Because it was such a struggle. It was so difficult. Even with you mentioning that I was a dancer. (laughs) I love dancing, but dancing was not what I was striving for. Mm -hmm. My passion was singing. But in my time, in order for me to get into singing, in in order for me to get into the nightclub, in order for me to get in the recording studio, I started dancing. Mm -hmm. And that allowed me to be able to sing on stage because in those days you had um in for the tourists you have groups like fire dancers and and bottle dancers and all different kind of dancing Mm -hmm. for the tourists and the group that i was with was called the estralita dancers (laughs) and so they made way for me when i came into the group so i could dance but not only dance but they gave me an opportunity to sing. Oh. Yeah. And that's where it started. Wow. Give thanks, Sister Judy Shells here. Um, This is a good moment for me, a great moment. I want to thank the bridge. I want to thank you for, for forwarding and, and having this reasoning. Because this is, this, this is just a moment for me to learn, you know, as a young Jamaican, you know, the music and things. So it's definitely a privilege. But I'm curious, you know, I want to know what, is, what, what were some of your, you know, favorite memories while working with the I3s? Oh, Lord. <laughs> I, I, if I start, no, I won't be able to stop, <laughs> you know. But my favorite moment mm-hmm. is having having a desire to work with these people, not knowing them, mm-hmm. 
But just seeing them and, you know, I admire Sister Marcia Griffiths because she's always current. And Sister Rita, for her group, the Soulettes, she was a member of this leader for the Soulettes group. And so when I look at them, they were people that I could emulate. And I am. Um, I remember Cox and Dodd asked me to do a song. I didn't know who I would be singing with. It was a Horace and this song, and he wanted background vocals. And when I went into the studio, I saw two ladies. And when I looked good, it was Marcia Griffiths and Rita Marley. I was unable to contain myself because I'm saying to myself, is this for real? <laughs> this is a dream yeah. come true. And I didn't have anybody to pinch. You know, <laughs> usually they say you have to pinch someone. Yes. I never had nobody to pinch. Wow. Our chemistry was just right. And the song that we went in the studio to do, it was completed in not long after. And then Marcia had a concert that night, and she invited Rita and I to come. Mm -hmm. And we did a supreme song. I mean, the supreme song was my favorite. It was Rita's favorite. And it was Marcia's favorite. So it wasn't difficult for us to harmonize or anything like that. And the rest is history. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you, you eventually caught, what, the, caught the attention of Bob Marley, and then uh, he requested that you all join him. How did that part go? Okay. Um, Bob was doing a um, Natty Dread album. Yes. At, he was doing it at Harry G Studio. And they invited us because they knew that we... A background, a group Singers, that uh -huh. did background vocals, and Bob invited us in the studio because Rita and Marcia have sung with him before, you know, doing background vocals. So they invited us in the studio, and I mean, it was just—I can't tell you—it just happened. It was like. I don't like to use the word magic because it's not magic, but it was meant to be. It was ordained by God himself. Mm -hmm. And what an experience it went on to become. Um, yes. so, as to those memories, I mean, it would take us a long time <laughs> for you to go through some. But in a nutshell, what is it like uh, uh, being on tour and working with uh, the king of, of reggae, Bob Marley? Just learning every day. It was a learning experience. Because every day it is something new. Um, Bob was a perfectionist, perfectionist, and he was also like a, a military leader. You know, he's not leaving anything to chance. If we have a concert in six months' time, three months' time, we would be rehearsing already. So when we get on that stage, there is no area for mistake. You're like in your backyard, you know, just singing and he would insist i mean if we are on tour and after we finish a concert we would go back to the hotel and you would think we'd get a chance to watch tv or to just relax mm -hmm. no bob wants the whalers and i three in his room to rehearse wow mm -hmm. and we are rehearsing for something that we don't know when it's going to be done but he's always a man ahead of his time yeah you know, mm -hmm. um, my listeners should note that um, Sister Judy Mowat became the first female singer uh, out of Jamaica to be nominated for a Grammy Award in the category of reggae music mm -hmm. for the album Working Wonders. Again, we congratulate nice. you. And uh, you. what can you tell us about how proud of you are you of that particular project, um, Working Wonders? Well, I it was a different project because. I was signed to Shanaki Records in, in, in New Jersey, and they wanted me to do an ex exclusive album for them because what I did all along was I record my own music. I was able to do what I wanted to do, yes. and I would give it to them to distribute. So we had a distribution deal. But this time, they wanted me to do an artist contract and so they would select producers. So there was this man, Skip Drink Water, and he came with two songs written by a guy called Nick Mundy, and Working Wonders was one of the songs. When I heard the song, I mean, instantly I fell in love with the song, and I wanted, I mean, every moment in the studio, 
I was there because I, as I say, I was in love with the song. And um, this, that was a song that was nominated for the Grammy Grammys. And um, I didn't even know. Nobody told me. I was just at home one evening and the phone rang. Yes, and it was Barry G calling me to state that, how do I feel with my album being nominated for the Grammys? I didn't know anything. I was so embarrassed. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I was so yes. embarrassed. And then he began to tell me that I was nominated. <laughs> I was so happy, but most of all, in those days, women... Women music, you never had female music being played steadily on the radio station, you know. And when I heard it, I said, well, at least this is opening some doors for the sisters. Mm -hmm. I never felt elated for me, but I saw it for my sisters. Yes. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, and, you know, you, you have really bridged the generation gap. You have been in the industry for several decades and still going strong. And whenever we see your name, whether on a record or, 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 on, a, or, or on a bill for performance, we get excited. Yeah. Um, what advice, um, Sister Judy, would you, would you want to share with uh, younger women who are currently in the music industry who aspire to have that level of longevity as you have yourself? Well, this, mu this business can make you or break you. And when I say break you, it can break your spirit. Because on my first venture to a recording studio, um, I was given something looking like a book to sign. They didn't even allow me to just release a record and just breathe. They gave me a book that was a contract. I didn't know that I didn't have any legal um, assistance from anybody. I didn't even know that that was necessary. And I couldn't read this book, this big book, in a in, in few minutes. And they wanted me to sign it. And inside of that, they were promising, yes, we will give you vocal training. We will give you um, dancing um, choreography. We will do all of this, all of that. So that sounded good. And I quickly put um, pen to paper and I signed, only to realize that the contract kept renewing, renewing itself every three years. Mm. So it was an indefinite contract that I signed, not knowing when. And when I was not, my music was not pleasing to them anymore, they put me as a stock on their shelves. And my, country, my, my, my career just started, you know. So my advice is that you must have legal assistance. Everything you do in your contracts and agreement, it may take money out of the little that you're earning, but it's going to be worth it because you might end up with a big court um, order that you are not able to manage. You know, so I believe in having a, um, an attorney to look over your contracts and whatever. And to have a manager, you must have a manager because if you are a creative person, then you need time to create. Mm -hmm. You cannot be doing the business and you cannot be in the recording studio and you don't have no time to create. Then you're going to run out of, of, of um, innovativeness or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then you are going to be in trouble because you have to be singing other people's songs when you can create your own songs and you earn much more from creating your own songs. And to know that, that those songs are coming from inside of you, coming from your soul. And that's what people want to hear, what is coming from your soul, not what is current and common. You know, people want what's coming out of you original stuff sister judy thank you thank you thank, thank you. you and uh we wish you well please let us get some of this new material that you're yes, working please. on as soon as it's ready and we'll definitely lend our support as usual richie b the party master on up and go the bridge 99 fm